for our annual Praise in the Park worship service and fellowship. Listen, y'all, it's here. Uh, it's August the 28th at 11 a.m., not 10 a.m., this year at 11 a.m. If you attended last year, you know we had an amazing time for Praise in the Park. But I'm sure there are some uh, who weren't there last year. You don't want to miss it this year. So what I need all of us to do, I need all of us to go uh, to our website, unionwesleyamez.org, and register for Praise in the Park August the 28th at 11 a.m. We will be streaming live. Please wear your Union Wesley t-shirt that you received last year. For those who did not receive a t-shirt, there will be a limited number and size available on site August 28th at 11 a.m. And say that time again. Say that date and time one more time. August 28th at 11 a.m. That's right. <laughs> then uh, this other piece of information is really important. I need you to really uh, hear this. I need all of us to bring backpacks and school supplies. We will be giving our young people on August the 28th at 11 a.m., we're gonna give them backpacks and school supplies. And then lastly, uh, this is also important as well, we have a sweet treat for you when you get here. So bring someone with you Amen. August the 28th at 11 a.m. We'll Amen. see you there. <laughs> Amen. That's right. See you there. Bye, everybody. Good morning to my Union Wesley family and friends joining today for...
the greatness. Praise him for the sound of the simp of the trumpet. Praise him with the flute and harp. Praise him with the cymbals and stands. Praise him with the string instruments and flute. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has blessed praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us give God some praise this morning. Amen and amen and amen. You may have your seats for the invocation. Let us pray. Father God, it is again that we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done for us this day. All through the week, as we went about our task, Lord, you covered us. You watched over us and made sure that all things were good in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to, we invite you into this place. We ask the Holy Spirit to come into this place. And we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us as we praise and worship you. Lord, take, have your way, Lord. Have your way in this place. And we'd be so grateful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Through Jesus Christ, we give thanks. Amen and amen. Let us stand for the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, make of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sin, the presence of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may have your seat. Good morning to my Union Wesley family and friends joining today for in-person worship and also to those joining us via our social media streaming platforms. Today is Sunday, August 14th, the second Sunday in August, and these are today's church announcements. Please join us for in-person worship services each week by going to our website and registering to confirm your attendance. Registration is available starting on Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You must register to be able to join us for in-person worship. All worshipers will have their temperature checked at the door, must wear a mask at all times while in the building, and must maintain social distance as recommended by the CDC. We begin today's upcoming events with a special shout out. Kudos go to the Intercessory Prayer Ministry, for going out on Thursday to pray with and for our community schools, Bunker Hill Elementary School and Brooklyn Middle School. We know our community and our community schools need our prayers and support. We are so looking forward to Praise in the Park. It will be held on Sunday, August 28th. Service starts at 11 a.m a new starting time for this special event. Seating for the service begins at 10.30. We look forward to seeing you and your family at the fields at RFK. Don't forget, you must register for this event and registration is currently open and available. Please note, the new date for the Ministry President's Meeting is Thursday, September 1st at 6 p.m. May I have your attention, please? Kindly note that our online giving service will be transitioned from the My Church website giving brand to the Easy Tithe brand on Tuesday, September 6th. 
We believe this change will have minimal impact to our givers. However, we will provide more details on this change and how it may affect you over the next few weeks. Please join us each week for Intercessory Prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Midweek Bible Study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and on Thursday mornings at 6 a.m. for Morning Manna. Then start the week with Sunday School each Sunday morning at 9 a.m., followed by our morning worship service at 10 a.m. Rebroadcasts of the Sunday morning service can be viewed at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. each Sunday. This concludes our announcements for today. Make sure to stay connected with us via our mobile app and through social media with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Michael Spencer, wishing God's grace and mercy for each of you and your families. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture comes from the New Revised Standard Version, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whosoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise God in your tents this morning as we prepare to speak to our God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, it's again that we just give you thanks this morning. We come to praise you. We come to worship you. We come to honor you and give you glory. For, Lord, we know that without you, we can do nothing because all power is in your hands. So, Lord, we come to you because we have issues. And, and even though we have seen your power, sometimes we just like the Israelites, we have seen the sea open and seen the, the miracles that you have done, but yet we complain. Lord, we want to 
say to you, forgive us. Forgive us for our complaints this morning. Forgive us for our grumblings one against another this morning. Lord, let us look in the past and read your resume and see how you have brought us over. That even when many say that we wasn't going to be here, many say that we wasn't going to be able to do the things that you asked us to do, we stood bold faced it, flat footed, and announced your word. And that word gave us power power to do what you call us to do. Call us to preach your word. Call us to live the life that you call us to live. Call us to be men and women of God. Call us to be examples for these, this generation as it come forward. And Lord, we ask you to continue to let us teach one generation to the next that the next generation will never forget you and the following generation will never forget you because of the fact of this generation is lifting you up. So Lord, as we have different problems and sickness and death even in our congregation, Lord, we ask you to be with those that are sick, those that are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, we ask you to touch their hearts and know that even in now, they can trust you. Even now, when all things look like they have lost, they has already got victory in Jesus Christ. We, even now, when sickness wraps your body and pain is all over, we are still victorious because your word tells us that by your stripes, we are already healed. Lord, even when things go wrong, we have seen examples when things look like it wasn't going to make it, but yet, God, you pull out a miracle. So, Lord, miracles ain't hard for you. Miracles is something that you just do when you feel like it. Well, all you have to do is speak the word, and that's, that's why we're here today. We're here to hear a word from you because we know that if you speak the word, just like the sun is shining, it will come to pass. Just like the sun rises from the east and go down in the west. We know that your word is true and nobody can stop your word. For the Bible tells us, Lord, that men, men can eat only bread, but every word of God, they have to take. So Lord, be with us. And Lord, we ask you to cover our preacher this morning. Our beside and elder, Dr. Durant. Lord, touch him with a finger of love. Touch him like you touch Moses and let him see your glory that he can preach the word and make us understand what thus says the Lord. And Lord, bless his family. Bless our pastor's family and, and all the ministers and, and officers in this church. Bless the congregation and even the ones that are watching on Zoom, Lord, and all the different platforms. We ask you to touch them, Lord, and do what you do. Make a miracle somewhere. Let them know that you love them and you will never forsake them. And Lord, we are so thankful to give you all the praise, the glory, the honor. And we do all these things in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we say thank you. And let the church say amen, amen, and amen.
Stand by me. Stand by me. While I walk this lonesome road. Yes. Oh Lord, stand by me. Help me bear this heavy load. If I stumble, Lord, pick me up. Help me drink this bitter cup. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, stand by me. Amen. We're going to sing another old standard this morning, if that's all right. Amen. <laughs> Some folk would rather have houses and land, and some folk choose silver and gold. But forget about their soul. But I decided to make Jesus my choice. Can I sing one more time? Yes, some folk yes. would rather have houses and land. And some folk choose silver. Forget about their souls, but I decided to make Jesus my choice. Come on, let's sing the chorus together. The road, come on. You know the road is rough.
away from my eyes yeah he's been a friend in the midst of the struggle and I'm here to tell you this morning that there's not a friend like Jesus no not one no not one thank you so much gospel ensemble for reminding us again of the power of the living Christ and all that he continues to do in your life and mine. I'm good, glad to be home again, to be at Union Wesley Church, and to share in the ministry of Christ along with you. To our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Brian S. Relford Sr. in his absence, and Sister Patrice Relford, and all the Relford family, to my family, Brenda Durant, Nicole Dominique Durant, Alvin L. Durant, Shana Christina Durant, Ashton Josiah Durant, Dahlia Rose Durant, and our youngest, Sydney Ann Durant. To all of the members of the Union Wesley family, Sister Doris Atkins for giving me clarity about what I am to do today. To all the tech team who showed me how to wire up and get ready for today. Brother Michael Spencer and others. It was good to see Brother Jason Weber early this morning. Brother Tim, Brother Ronald as always to all of the members of the Gospel Ensemble, and to you, the ministers who shared in worship today, Reverend Greg, Sister Agri, Reverend uh, Madison over there, and other ministers on the staff, both active and retired. It's good to be here. It's good to be home. The next few months will be kind of busy for us, as I will be traveling, as always, throughout the district to visit churches, which is, of course, my responsibility. And so, if you don't see me, just pray for me. Pray that God will continue the work, that I will be faithful to the assignment given as presiding elder of the Washington district, the greatest district in the whole AME Zion Church, amen. That's my story wherever I go, and I'm sticking with it. Amen. Amen. In the epistle, the first epistle of Peter, chapter number 2, verses 9 through 10, you'll find these words. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
God's own people in order that you might proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Pray with me now in Jesus' name. Lord, our God, we humbly come before you today. Say thank you for the privilege of being able to share at Union Wesley today. It's so marvelous and wonderful to see all the people that I've known down through the years. I pray you might continue to visit us, not only in this room, but also on the various streaming platforms that we use to broadcast this service. It is my prayer today, Lord, that you will speak another word in this room that might empower, that will be useful in the lives of those persons who listen. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. And I pray, O oh God, that the word that you've given me will be handy. Thank you, O oh God, for inspiration, for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Fill me now with the power for preaching, that I, my Lord, proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'd like for you to consider this idea that springs from the text, the church, identity and function. The church, identity and function. More than two years ago, with the coming of COVID-19, many changes happened in our world and they are still happening even now. Changes in community, uh, some for the good and others not so good. We have witnessed unprecedented killing and shooting in communities, and especially in our area, almost daily, someone loses their lives due to gun violence. And then there is the madness that continues to plague us in politics, especially in light of what happened in Florida recently to the former president, it just seems like this nation has lost its entire mind. Amen. As we remember two, more than two years ago, with the announcement and coming of COVID-19, many uh, churches, and pastors, and lay leaders gathered together to discuss and plan the appropriate course of action. We remember that protocols were put in place to ensure the safety of our parishioners. Churches were sanitized, sound systems were upgraded. Some were purchased along with other equipment. Tech teams were formed and various media platforms were introduced. As we launched our various worship services, ministry meetings and leaders meetings, it had already been difficult before COVID getting members and the community to come to church. And now churches around the world, as we have reopened, it appears that more and more people have drifted away from the church. Perhaps we have lost our need or we need to rediscover our identity and function. Just as identity is crucial on a personal level, it is also very crucial for the church. When we forget who we are, we become so preoccupied with minor function and lesser matters that our primary being and function are soon forgotten. In the text, the apostle Peter speaks to us about identity. Listen again, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who brought you out 
of darkness into the marvelous light. That's who we are. He was writing to Christians who were facing slander and persecution. They were Christians in exile. And so this letter of Peter is kind of a circular epistle that was passed from group to group. And whenever the churches gathered, the, le the letter would be read. The purpose of this letter, chapter 2, was to fortify these believers and enable them to stand fast in their Christian commitment. Peter further says, and listen again, once you were no people, once you were no people, but now you are God's own people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Having been proud and falsely self-sufficient, they now knew the mercy of God and had become the recipients of God's grace. They were now people with whom God had made a covenant. As covenant people, who are we? And what is our function? Who are we, my beloved sisters and brothers? I remind you that as believers in Christ Jesus, we are a covenant community, the church. We are God's covenant community, having been brought out of darkness into the marvelous light, so says the text. I need to remind us of this because many of us over the past two years have developed what I'd like to call an identity crisis. Listen again to the text. Once you were no people, but now you're God's own people. Once you had not received mercy because you were walking around in your selfishness and pride, but now you have, by God's grace, received mercy. Now you are a chosen race. In other generation translation, it says a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are, we are God's own people. My sisters and brothers, as God's covenant community, as God's chosen people, we have been called into redemptive being by God. We are people who are to walk by faith and not by sight. We are people who are loved by God and we should in turn share God's love in the world. We are people who God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and a sound mind. This should give us not only a sense of reverence when you think about all that God has done for you, brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. When you had not received the mercy of God, because God saved your soul and made you whole, now you have received the mercy of God's grace. And this should cause you to be in awe of God. Saying to yourself, why would God do this for a wretch like me? But I'm happy this morning that I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, now I can see. So our identity is clear. But what is our function? In the text again, I want to keep on saying this, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
You are God's own people that you might declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And so this morning, I want you to personalize this and use the pronoun I and say, I am a chosen one. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I am God's own that I might tell the wonderful deeds of the one who brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. I know that's right. Our purpose and identity is clear. As God's covenant community, our function is to declare God's wonderful deeds in our families and community. We are the priesthood of all believers. Every person in this room and every person on our various platforms who claims to know Jesus, who understands who you are, have called, been called to do priestly work. Our function is two, twofold. The first function of this priestly work is that we speak to people for God. Amen. We speak to people for God. And no, I understand you're not a preacher. <laughs> Amen. Remember what Paul says, some are called to. Amen. But as a believer in Christ Jesus, you are still called to a priestly function. And that is to tell or to speak to people about who God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promises never to leave me, but always to keep me. And he never, ever falls short of his word. As you speak to people about God and for God, you can tell them that God is a creative power of the universe, that he moved throughout the scriptures, changing and rearranging the life. And even when his own people deserted him and abandoned him and walked away from him, God was still faithful, faithful to bring them back to him. So faithful was he that when the New Testament came, he came himself in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ to show us just how much he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. My sister, my brother, speak to the world for God. Amen. But not only do we speak to the world of God's goodness, God's saving power, God's healing power, we also speak in our priestly function to God for people. I heard this morning of how the intercessory prayer ministry went out in community at schools and prayed as people get ready to go back to school. That's a part of our function as the body of Christ to pray to God on behalf of the people to intercede to God on behalf of the people. People who are struggling with life, pray for them. People who are going through this COVID, not sure what's going to happen next, pray for them. People who have lost loved ones in the midst of this COVID struggle, pray for them. Members of your own family who are wilding out and you can't figure out what they're going to do next, pray for them. As I get on Facebook sometime, I have to leave words to friends of mine, TMI, too much information. We didn't need to know all that. Amen. And then I began to pray for them that God would cause them to stop that foolishness. We don't need to know all of your business on Facebook. Talk to Jesus. 
Tell him all about your struggles. He'll hear your faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. Pray for those. Pray for family members and friends who are going through a hard time in life. Now I know that sometimes as we consider our function that we feel a little inadequate and, and unworthy of such a high calling and high priestly work to speak for God and speak for the people. I feel you. But please know, my sisters and brothers, that we don't go alone. Amen. Jesus himself in the New Testament told us that he was going to send us something. Yeah. Send us the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit will fill our lives and give us the empowerment to speak for God. Give us the empowerment to pray for others. And so, my sisters and brothers, you don't go alone. The good news is that the Holy Spirit is our source of power and guidance to build up our spiritual houses for Christ. My sisters and brothers, as I finish, I remind you again that we are the covenant community, the church. Our function is to be a priest. That is, we have priestly work to do, to speak to the people for God. That you and I have priestly work to do, to speak to God on behalf of the people. So my sisters and brothers, you've got a story to tell. You've got a story to share. And remember, as you share your story, God can use your story for his glory. People, my sisters and brothers, need to hear your story. They need to hear of the character and power of God in your life. They need to hear how God brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. They need to hear when you were sick with COVID. And I understand it's a rough ride. I've seen it, but don't want to get it. Amen. But you know if you come out of it, you can testify that God was with me all the way. That he delivered me. That he healed me in Jesus' name. People need to hear your story. Share your story. And remember that you don't have to know and understand everything about God. Just share what you know about God. Amen. When I was a little boy, growing up in, in Sunday school, the teachers did their best to help us understand a little about God. And so they began to teach us this little song about God, that God is wonderful, that God is powerful, that God is all in the world to see. And they would ask us, how did we know about God? And we would pray, we would repeat after them, God is wonderful. And God is powerful. And God is all the world. Because they had us standing as little children. And we had to put our arms out. God is in all the world. I still can do it. For others to see. I was a little boy then. Didn't quite understand it. But as I've gotten older. And as I've gotten closer to the Lord. I better understand just who God is. And God is who he said he is. God is all loving and God is in the world for all the world to see. And my sisters and brothers today, let us share our story to tell the good news of the gospel. Because in this COVID season, there are men and women who just need to know the goodness of the Lord. And so today, as people start to slowly coming back to our churches our denominational theme is to share 
our faith in community. And my prayer is today that you and I, Union Western and the Washington District, will begin to share our faith in community, that we'll move beyond these walls and encourage people to come on back to the church so that together we might build up the kingdom of God and that the church of God might continue to be the lively place where people are working out their soul salvation, all because we understand who we are and we understand what our purpose is. And that purpose, again, is to tell the world about who Jesus is. A few years ago, some of you already know this story because I've told it before. I went up to Goodyear, just up the street from the parsonage where Brenda and I lived at the time. It was early in the morning, and I went to get some work done on my truck at the time. I was sitting there in, in, the, in the store minding my own business, trying to read the paper and drink a little coffee. But then two persons came in carrying magazines, and they were trying to say to the attendant behind the counter, tell him who God was. And I sat there and I said, Lord, I'm not getting into that. I'm going to sit here and mind my own business. And they kept on talking to the attendant behind the counter. And the Holy Spirit in me kept on saying to me, Alvin, get up. You've got a story to tell. They're messing up the story, Alvin. You've got a story to tell. And before I knew it, the Lord grabbed me by the hand. He pulled me over to the counter and I had to engage and share my story with those in the room. My sisters and brothers, people need to hear your story. They need to hear your story. Just how God brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And I do say that in that setting, we made the difference. All because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And I know what he's called me to do. And I'm going to tell the story of unseen things above. Of Jesus and his glory. Of Jesus and his love. Oh, I'm going to tell the story. Because I know it's true. It satisfies my longing like nothing else can do. It's, it's an old, old story. It will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. You are the church. You are the covenant community of God. And your function shall always be to share your story in community. We've got priestly work to do to speak for God and to speak to God about the struggles of others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Today it's my pleasure and my privilege as we offer this invitation to Christian discipleship. And you can do so today as we consider salvation rededication, and joining this family of believers in Washington, D.C., and prayer. In order to do that, you can go to our website, or you can go to the Union Wesley app and click on Make a Decision. Once you click on that, you can declare your decision for salvation. I want you to note this morning that Jesus saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. Thank God now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. You know, I came to Jesus just like I was, weary, wounded and sad, proud and self-sufficient. And he has given me a resting place. And ever since that day, I've been so glad. Make your decision today. Come to Jesus. 
and he will save you. Yes, he will save you just now. And if you'd like to rededicate, you can do that today. Maybe you drifted far away from God. Just know God has never left you. And you can, through this opportunity, get things right with God. And then if you want to join Union Wesley, a great church in Washington, D.C. with great ministry, and you'd like to come and be a part of this fellow man of faith, a covenant community who understands clearly our identity and focus, we give you a chance to come. Just click on our website or app, and there you can find out how you might join. And then if you like prayer, Please do the same, and someone will be in touch with you right away to join with you in prayer because we understand that one of our functions is to pray for others, to talk to God about you. And we'd like to do that today. Please do so right away in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for those persons who are in the process of making a decision. My prayer is today that they might make that decision for salvation. That they might make a decision for rededication. That they might make a decision to join the Church of God today called Union Wesley. That together we might understand and clear our identity. Go forward in community. Be the witnesses that you've called for us to be. And so Lord, we're praying for those who need prayer today. May you mend broken hearts, fix troubled minds, give us the assurance that we are not alone in the struggle of life. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. It's giving time at Union Wesley. This is a time where you can share your tithes and offerings. There are three ways for us to do so. On the website, Union Wesley AME Zion, amez.org, on the Union Wesley Church app, and you can mail it uh, to the office or drop it off during the week. And we will ensure that good hands will receive it and be good stewards of the offerings that have been deposited here. Let's pray again. God bless those who will give through the various streams on our website, on the app, or we'll drop it off here at the church or mail it in. May they be blessed by being faithful and thankful for the things you have deposited in them all because of the work they do. And so God, thank you again for all that you've done. Continue to bless and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you, Union Wesley. And thank you, Pastor Relford, for this privilege of sharing with you today to remind us all that our function as a church is to know our identity, who we are in Christ Jesus. Then once we understand who we are, we can truly carry out our function. We have priestly work to do. And it is my prayer that by God's Holy Spirit, we might live out our faith in community to tell others about the goodness of the Lord while we live. Because the night is coming and no one will work again. And so my friends here at Union Wesley, work while it's day so that when the night comes and you have to give an account to the one and the keeper of your soul, you can say, Lord, I did the best with everything you put in my hands. Here it is, my sacrifice of praise. And I'm thankful that I was able to be used by you. So now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. 
and the redeemed of the Lord who know who they are, who clearly understand what your function is, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, and amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Hey, family, uh, we have just left the fields of RFK, uh, where we've been getting ready for our annual Praise in the Park worship service and fellowship. Uh, listen, y'all, it's here. Uh, it's August the 28th at 11 a.m., not 10 a.m., this year at 11 a.m., if you attended last year, you know we had an amazing time for Praise in the Park. But I'm sure there are some uh, who weren't there last year. You don't want to miss it this year. So what I need all of us to do, I need all of us to go uh, to our website, unionwesleyamez.org, and register for Praise in the Park August the 28th at 11 a.m. We will be streaming live. Please wear your Union Wesley t-shirt that you received last year. For those who did not receive a t-shirt, there will be a limited number and size available on site August 28th at 11 a.m. And say that time again, say that date and time one more time. August 28th at 11 a.m. That's right. <laughs> then uh, this other piece of information is really important. I need you to really uh, hear this. I need all of us to bring backpacks and school supplies. We will be giving our young people on August the 28th at 11 a.m., we're gonna give them backpacks and school supplies. And then lastly, uh, this is also important as well, we have a sweet treat for you when you get here. So bring someone with you, Amen. August the 28th at 11 a.m. We'll Amen. see you there. <laughs> Amen, that's right. See you there. Bye, everybody. Good morning to my Union Wesley family and friends joining today for in-person worship and also to those joining us via our social media streaming platforms. Today is Sunday, August 14th, the second Sunday in August, and these are today's church announcements. Please join us for in-person worship services each week by going to our website and registering to confirm your attendance. Registration is available starting on Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You must register to be able to join us for in-person worship. All worshipers will have their temperature checked at the door, must wear a mask at all times while in the building, and must maintain social distance as recommended by the CDC. We begin today's upcoming events with a special shout out. Kudos go to the Intercessory Prayer Ministry for going out on Thursday to pray with and for our community schools, Bunker Hill Elementary School and Brooklyn Middle School. We know our community and our community schools need our prayers and support. We are so looking forward to Praise in the Park. It will be held on Sunday, August 28th. Service starts at 11 a.m., a new starting time for this special event. Seating for the service begins at 10.30. We look forward to seeing you and your family at the fields at RFK. Don't forget, you must register for this event and registration is currently open and available. Please note, the new date for the Ministry President's Meeting is Thursday, September 1st at 6 p.m. May I have your attention please? Kindly note that our online giving service will be transitioned from the My Church Website Giving brand to the Easy Tithe brand on Tuesday, September 6th. We believe this change will have minimal impact to our givers. However, 
We will provide more details on this change and how it may affect you over the next few weeks. Please join us each week for Intercessory Prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Midweek Bible Study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and on Thursday mornings at 6 a.m. for Morning Manna. Then start the week with Sunday School each Sunday morning at 9 a.m., followed by our morning worship service at 10 a.m. Rebroadcasts of the Sunday morning service can be viewed at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. each Sunday. This concludes our announcements for today. Make sure to stay connected with us via our mobile app and through social media with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Michael Spencer, wishing God's grace and mercy for each of you and your families.